The treasury of Atreus, also known as the Tomb of Agamemnon, is an astonishing ancient structure found on the Paganitsa Hill, Mycena, Greece, which, according to academia, dates back a mere 3,000 years. However, the supposed accomplishments of its bronze-wielding builders is predictably yet to be explained by those who have supposedly accurately dated the structure. Undoubtedly, the most compelling and thus contradictory feature of this build is the lintel. Along with other lesser-known megalithic blocks, which still litter the site, the structure's lintel found within the build is currently known to be the biggest ancient stone lintel in the world. This weight-bearing block, which bridges the door's opening, is still, regardless of clear erosion, an incredible 120 metric tons. An inconceivable weight for our ancestors placed a mere century ago, let alone our well-studied Bronze Age descendants, who are supposed to have been responsible for the quarrying and transportation of this ashlar stone, and then setting this enormous stone aloft more than 2 meters perfectly placing it atop the structure's main opening. With an interior height of 13.5 meters and a diameter of 14.5 meters, it was the tallest and widest dome in the world for over a thousand years. The precision involved in the placement of these enormous stones once made the interior of the build appear polished smooth. Furthermore, above its astonishing lintel, is another intriguing design feature in the shape of a pyramid, also used within modern-day rafters of house roofs. This opening was incorporated specifically to channel excess weight away from the lintel. This design feature was realized as essential for structural integrity and was included to prevent the building from collapsing over time. This addition, we feel, could only have been made by members of a civilization who clearly had advanced technical knowledge of load-bearing architectural design, and as such, is indicative of techniques far too advanced for that of our Bronze Age ancestors. This space, which is known as a relieving triangle, is meant to funnel the weight of the structure off the lintel and into the sides, preventing the lintel from cracking due to pressure. Furthermore, there have also long been rumors surrounding the site that it was originally found to have had an interior decorated with pure gold. Do these features sound like the work of our well-studied developing ancestors? Or perhaps, surviving work left by an accomplished group who were once part of an advanced, technologically capable civilization? We believe that the evidence found at the structure is simply unexplainable when attributed to a primitive people. As such, it is highly likely that the currently attested opinions in regards to its construction are inaccurate and seemingly conspiratorial. How did an ancient people incorporate such enormous stone blocks into their long-lasting precision builds without the involvement of advanced weightlifting technologies? How can certain fields of authoritative study expect critical thinking individuals to believe a purveyed account for the origins of such inexplicable ancient sites, and indeed the civilizations responsible, being that of a group just beginning to understand the science of producing smelted bronze? How were they capable of such precision with such gigantic weight-bearing architecture? It is, understandably, a highly controversial ruin, which is clearly highly compelling. Tokyo's Imperial Palace Home of the Japanese Emperor and a place which holds many secrets. Some it seems hidden in plain sight for countless centuries. For many years people have visited this marvelous building and the perfectly kept grounds it is placed within. What is interesting regarding its historical history is the fact that much of it is hidden and yet to be told. The oldest historical accounts for the palace date back to 1457 AD, when a great warrior known as Ido Shigetsugu built the castle Ido on the site. Ido's clan would perish in the 15th century as a result of uprisings in the Kanto and Ota Dokan regions of Japan. However, what is interesting regarding the palace's construction is its foundations. 
including the exterior wall, which many now believe was already in existence before the castle's construction, and also the reason the site was chosen all those years ago by the warrior Ido himself. The construction techniques visible in the original construction are clearly evidence of highly advanced building techniques, completed by a clearly highly advanced civilization. And these methods used within the foundations were not replicated throughout the more recent structure, as if forgotten between builds. Additionally, a piece of artifactual evidence was recently covered, a highly compelling building technique which unquestionably links many ancient sites to one another found all over the world, showing an intercontinental sharing of building knowledge many millennia ago. Known as the missing metal clamps, their carved seats still present upon many of the most ancient stonework at the palace, eroded away metal clamps used to keep the stones firmly in place as they settled over the following years after construction. Present at countless sites across the world, a technique somehow shared worldwide, only differing from country to country in their process of manufacture. The evidence to suggest that the Palace of Japan is in fact built upon a far older and possibly once far more spectacular structure seems overwhelming. Yet questions remain, most obvious of which, who built the structure to begin with? When did they build it? And what was its purpose? Thankfully, the more we understand regarding the perplexing techniques used by this elusive, yet clearly once highly advanced civilization, the more of these ruins we are seemingly spotting, allowing for their study and subsequent preservation before lost forever. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.